Today on this dry creek bed, I am going to show you where you can find your own real placer gold. Well, hello everyone, Dan Herd with Dan Herd Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am here on Little Meadow Creek at the Reed Gold Mine in North Carolina, one of the most historic gold finds in all of the USA. It was the first place recorded in history that they found gold in the US, right here. I'm gonna use this creek today to demonstrate to you where to look for gold. I'm going to walk for like miles and show you all the different spots that I think gold would capture and where I would try panning for gold to find that yellow shiny metal. Let's get to it. Wish me luck and I hope you enjoy. Now today, I'm just going to be walking, pointing out spots and explaining why I would check for gold there. I am not going to do any panning. If you want to see me panning this creek, you'll have to go back and check out one of my previous videos. I was here and did a whole lot of panning and found a whole lot of gold. And this is one of the spots right here that I was panning. If you want to know why I was panning here, you'll have to go back and watch that video. I'm moving on to some virgin ground. This being a dry creek bed is great because I get to point out stuff that you would normally not see because it would be underwater. I get to walk down each of the channels, looking around and seeing what kind of things I would look for. And now, of course, if you've watched any videos on gold panning, you're going to know the three basics. Three things that are the always the first place you should try looking for gold because they're the standards. One is finding a big rock and digging the gravels that are behind the rock. Because the big rock, it disturbs the water flow, creates a swirl behind of a low pressure, gold can drop out right there, get washed, the lighter gravels wash away, leaving a concentration of gold behind a big rock. Inside corners, of course, inside corners. Whenever the creek comes around a bend, creates a low pressure zone inside of the bend on the inside corner, drops out the heavies there, the water washes away light material, concentrating gold. And bedrock outcrops. Wherever you see bedrock outcrops is a great place to try because gold is so heavy, settles down through the gravels until it finds something it can't settle through. You can't break bedrock, you can't get through bedrock, so the gold will sit on bedrock. Boulders, inside corners, and bedrock. Those are the three basics. Today, I'm going to just breeze over those basics and go into a bit more of the nitty gritty of on this creek where I would actually look and why. Undercut banks. There is a great place to try. Wherever you see that the water has washed out under a bank, right down below is a good spot to try because any gold that was in the material that got washed away because gold is so heavy it might not have got washed away with that material it may have been like sitting up here in the gravels washed out and it would have fallen and landed right there and stayed so digging the gravels underneath a washed out bank is always a good idea now, don't dig into the banks. We don't want to destroy the banks of these creeks. The creeks themselves are sort of precious environments to us. We don't want to destroy the environment. So don't dig into the banks. Just dig the material at the bottom of washed out banks. There's your first sort of more in depth where to pan for gold. Now this next one I see would be a bit more work for a panner, the panner would have to go through a bit more effort to actually find the good gold here. But I love this. Bedrock, lots of moss on it. Bedrock, lots of moss on it. And the lowest point in the channel right between the two. There is another channel over there, but it's higher. Here is the lowest point between two chunks of bedrock. The channel is maybe four feet wide from side to side here. In a situation like this, I would go exactly halfway, right there, 
start removing boulders. Get rid of the boulders, dig down and find out what this trough looks like at the very bottom. All of the heavies will be funneled through this one trough right here. And if there's any kind of catch at the bottom, pockets, crevices, anything, all of the gold that came through this channel would have had to get either caught or find its way over that catch. This could be a very rich little spot anywhere in this channel. I see bedrock, bedrock, and the channel's probably 10 feet long. If you had time, clear the whole thing. If not, just go down the center line, get down there and see if you can find that lowest point. And looking at this trough from the other side, there's a big rock in the center of the trough right here. Could be bedrock, could be a boulder. Either way, anything that's coming down this trough has to go around it, swirl around it, behind a boulder in that trough. Oh yeah. Here's a big boulder in the middle of the, the channel and look at the gravels behind it. That's just showing you how it deposits gravels behind boulders. Often these kind of gravels don't have any gold in them because any gold that swirled and fell into those gravels because they're loose would have sunk down. You gotta dig down at a place like this. The top stuff, if you find gold, it's gonna be tiny. Dig down. There's another boulder, look at this one. This one's a perfect riffle, just like in a sluice box great gravel deposit behind it but again you gotta dig down nice day walking down the creek <laughs> anyhow we got a log coming out of the creek here that has obviously excavated a pothole in front of it water rushing through here hits the log churns up moved all the material blasted it all down the creek but it created this high turbulence area which would have had low pressure zones all around in it scoured the bedrock. If you find smooth bedrock that's scoured, don't even bother. Anything that's on it's gone. But if you find hollows or edges where the scouring has just stopped, great place. There's an undercut there, obviously. Check the gravels. But I would also check the edge of this scoured bedrock where it starts turning back into boulders. Good spot right there. Also a low spot, hopefully there's a big crevice down there just after it's scoured, which could have put the gold in. Any kind of disruption in the water flow is going to cause turbulence and it's gonna cause areas of high pressure and low pressure. The gold is gonna drop out in the low pressure areas and then all sorts of material will drop out there, but the lighter stuff gets washed away, concentrating the heavies at that point. Look at those crazy, crazy roots. Root system like this, again, good place to check around. You know that that has sort of recently been scoured clean because those roots were once growing in dirt. And because it was scoured clean, any gold that was in that dirt where those roots were growing dropped down right below it. Underneath there, good spot. Roots can capture gold because they're a place that causes that disruption in the water flow. It's not just eroding away the dirt anymore. It's capturing water, creating turbulence, washing out material. It's dropping down. Look for roots. Look for roots. I have done a few other videos just like this where I walk down creeks just pointing out the spots. If you want to get a really good in-depth cross-section of different spots to check, go back and look at all of those videos. Each and every creek has its own properties. Right now I'm walking down a dry creek bed. The last few videos, one was a big river, the other one was a small creek. They all have their idiosyncrasies. You'll see common themes throughout, but Every river is a little bit different. You gotta get an eye for everything over time. Learn along the way. Hmm, this is interesting. Tree growing what is now right in the middle of the whole river. Right behind this tree, remember roots, roots are good. Right behind this tree, I see bedrock. Bedrock with fractures and material captured down in those fractures right behind a great big obstacle. Right there. Look at how loose it is too. These rocks in here are loose. Material all around. That there is a juicy little spot. I would definitely clear that out into a pan and pan that out. And once you start clearing that, you're probably gonna find more areas of loose bedrock. Any of these cracks, all that material but in the cracks could have gold. That's a good little spot. 
behind a tree on bedrock. And I see the bedrock is scoured clean for, what is that, six feet, seven feet behind that tree. Anything back here would be really good. And again, it is the very lowest spot of the creek. High on that side, high on that side, it's the bottom. Behind a tree, on the bottom, on bedrock. Woohoo! You got it. There's gold there. And on a creek like this, where obviously bedrock is just inches below the surface anywhere, digging down to bedrock at any point could give you something. But this would be a creek for a metal detector. Oh yeah. Metal detectors only pick up bigger pieces of gold and they only pick up at the surface. They don't go very deep. So because the bedrock is near the surface here, it might pick up nuggets close by. Look at that rock right in the middle. That would be one to dig behind, that's for sure. More bedrock, big deep crevices, clear out those crevices, they may have caught something. On something like this, I would definitely check to see if this chunk, specifically this chunk, is loose. Ugh, my pry bar is not gonna get it. A bigger shovel might loosen that. If it's a loose piece, dig underneath it. If it's solid, gotta just clear out the cracks. Big quartz seam, big quartz dike going right across the river here. That actually might be a good thing to dig behind, especially a place like this where the gold is being released straight from quartz. There's a hard rock mines all around us right now. Any gold that was in that quartz vein that may have got washed out of it or eroded out would probably fall right behind it. Nice spot. It would be worth a check. Now this isn't an undercut bank, but it's a very, very steep, thick bank. So a lot of material is getting washed out of here and dropping down at the bottom. Looks to be bedrock, but it also looks to have a layer of cobble right on top of the bedrock. What I do in a spot like this, I would look for a place like this, bedrock, bedrock, no bedrock. I would dig down in that crevice right at the edge of the bank see what it's capturing especially because it's got all these cobbles in a layer underneath the topsoil again we have a big chunk of bedrock with a tree on top of it disrupting the water flow nothing really jumping at me as a place i would try other than just digging down maybe see if that rock there moves yeah that rock moved yep yeah. i'd move that dig down till i hit that bedrock again see what's there uh oh creek goes two different directions Creek splits here. Part of it goes that way, part of it goes that way. This way is a lower elevation. It's deeper. Follow the deep channel. Spider webs. Ah, I hate spiders. Oh yes, the deep channel was the way to go. Look at this root system here. Obviously the water is falling over it. Scouring bedrock clean. Nice deep pocket here. Loose chunks of bedrock in the bottom. Clear out that pocket, you'd find gold, guaranteed. See how the, oh yes, the bedrock here is loose. I would get rid of all of this, find all the material that's down in amongst those rocks. All of that stuff, that is what captures the gold. That's where you would find gold there. I guarantee there'd be gold right there. Oh, that's good. That's a gold mine. Over on the other side, we have very similar looking stuff. Roots aren't nearly as big, it's just a smaller tree, but we definitely have bedrock, bedrock, and a crevice between them. In a place like this where it's slanted, there's more material being dropped on this side, but the gold being heavy is gonna work its way over to the deep part. Bedrock along there, I would definitely work along the deep channel, especially on the bedrock. Big area of bedrock here, lots of bedrock. Bedrock is my friend. You'll see a lot of um, crevices or gouges in the bedrock that go perpendicular to the creek. A lot of people tell you you always want those perpendicular ones because they act like riffles in a sluice box. Water flows over top, gold gets caught in them. My experience is perpendicular and linear crevices both have their merits. Perpendicular because it's acting like a sluice box. Linear crevices concentrate the gold. So if you find a crevice that's following the river 
because it's the lowest point, because all the heavies are working their way into that crevice, the heavies are following that crevice down. If it's linear with the creek, it's concentrating in the bottom. Now it is flowing through, it's pushing the gold through. So you need to find a catch, a rock that's jammed into it, a hole that's in it, a crevice that goes sideways at that point. But if you find a crevice that goes linear with the creek, I find it's always every bit as good as the ones that go perpendicular. Crevices are good just in general. Great big flat chunk of bedrock. In this situation, unless you found sort of pockets or crevices that looked intriguing in some way, I probably wouldn't touch this bedrock. And the reason is the whole bedrock here is slanted, slanted to the right here. And it's fairly smooth. Anything heavy would stay on this inside corner in the deep channel, probably wouldn't be found up on the bedrock. So this, even though it's bedrock, probably wouldn't touch. I'd probably find a better spot because there's a lot of better spots around. Big, wide open, flat, all gravels, going straight. I would just walk right by this. Wouldn't even have a look. Again, there's much better looking spots than this. I've heard this guy is really fun. He's a fun guy! <laughs> oh, sorry. I know. I just lost a bunch of subscriptions right there. <laughs> now this is good looking bedrock. Look at how big it is. It's kind of flat, bends off to this side a little bit. You can see the slope of the bedrock, so it would push gold to the right. Big chunks of bedrock, all with the crevices going perpendicular to the creek. Somewhere in here will be good. I haven't seen a place I would dig yet because you want something that's kind of easy to start. Maybe that crevice there, maybe in this low spot behind this log. Mm, tree. This looks good, but there's nothing easy to dig here. Linear crevice right there, horizontal crevices all around. But if you want to work this spot, and I guarantee you there'd be gold here, but if you want to work this spot, it would take a lot of work to find something good to start digging. Big dip here. Again, looks great, but I think you'd find easier spots than that to work. And the bedrock keeps going and going and going and going. I see it all through here. That's it there. This, this gives me a good thing to talk about. The channel comes straight down like this, comes straight down. It's hitting all these crevices on a 45 degree angle, meaning anything that's heavy falling in them is hitting and pushing, hitting and pushing. Everything here is pushing off to the left, or I guess that's my right. Left if you're coming down river. The other right, yeah. And I would assume there's nothing in any of those cracks until you get to a catch of some sort off on this side. Again, two channels, that one is lower. Let's go to the lower channel. Ooh, uh, much what I'm seeing here. Go back up river a bit. We got another deep channel right on bedrock. Bedrock, maybe bedrock, might not be. Here's one of your linear crevices, although it's kind of short. Any of these rocks that are free that you can move down in those crevices, those holes, those pockets would be good. And working in fall like this also has another challenge is that the leaves on the ground do hide a lot. So you have to sort of just imagine what it looks like underneath those leaves. I see a pool of water in front of us. The creek isn't completely dry. Bedrock, bedrock, trough in between. Looks great. And the fact that it's wet down here, the standing water, means that that's going to be a low point. It has to go uphill to get out of that point. Great pocket to clear. I see more standing water right here. Same idea. On a, a dry creek like this, I'd probably try to dig in the dry whenever possible because it's just going to be easier for you. But bedrock, bedrock, a pothole of water means it's the lowest point in this section. I wonder how much gold I've walked over on this trip. Probably millions of dollars worth. We have found a little pond. To go farther, I have to go up and around. Let's go up and around. I see a bench or something over here. Oh, look, a bench and a road. I think I'm still on Reed Gold Mines Park land. They said it goes all the way down to the main road and I haven't hit the main road yet, but there seems to be activity here and I would hate to trespass on someone else's land. I will be careful. I He did tell me the creek goes all the way to the main road, so I should be fine. And while I take this little breather, it gives me a chance to talk about where you find gold. I know that's what I've been talking about this whole time, but there's a saying that gold is where you find it, meaning it could be anywhere. These little tricks and hints and places 
are just places that have a better chance of finding gold. Gold is going to be strewn throughout everything. You could find a big nugget in the most unlikely of spots, but all these places I'm pointing out have a higher chance of finding gold. The rules of thumb are just that. They're kind of rules of thumb. They're places to get you started. If you start finding gold on the outside curve in light gravels, well, dig there, of course. But the chances of gold being on an outside curve in light gravels are far slimmer than being on the inside curve on bedrock behind a boulder. And all of these little hints I'm giving you, if you can start adding them together, your chances go up and up and up. Yes, digging behind a boulder is great. If you can find a boulder on an inside corner, that's twice as good. If you can find a boulder on an inside corner on bedrock, whoo-hoo, you're on it, man. The more of these sort of hints that you can add or multiply together, the better your chances are of finding gold. But gold is where you find it. It could be anywhere. I must still be on the park land. There's a sign for tunnel two and I see a big tailings dump here. So there's probably a, you know, another tunnel, tunnel two right here somewhere. The Reed Gold Mine has all sorts of adits, pits, tunnels, everything. There's lots going on, lots of historic mining in this area. Oh, looks like you can get back down the creek again. Look at those great big bedrock crevices going basically perpendicular to the creek. They slant down on this side a bit. I would work this side versus that side. Here's an artifact, an old artifact. This was a mill stone. So this would have been a great big round stone that was the other way up and it had two other big stone wheels that rolled around in it to crush rock. Great little historic piece there. Love it. Artifact from the old mining. Oh, and there's a sign. Reed Gold Mine Trail Map. I'm still on the Reed Gold Mine property for sure. Everywhere down here is bedrock now. Bedrock. Ah, this is a good, good one to show you. Anytime you can find a rock that is part of bedrock, like this is this is a big chunk of bedrock, but you have loose rocks that can actually be pried out. They move. See how it moves? There's a little bit of movement, movement there. Means that there's gaps between it and the bedrock, and those are where the gold has settled down over the millions of years and hid in cracks. Then frost heaving has broken that rock free, and now you can pop it out and get any gold that has been accumulating for the last 10 billion years. Okay, maybe I exaggerate a little bit. That is the perfect little spot. Work that out and there will be gold in that crevice. Great horizontal cracks and crevices. That rock there is free, but that would take a lot of work to move that, but underneath it would be a good spot. But that would take a lot of work to move it because it's so big. There's bedrock here, but because there's that little pond right there, pretty much guarantee any gold is, you know, down in deep in the water, down in the low point, not up here. Here's an old rotted out stump. Good spot, but very hard to work. If you could actually break that up and pull it out and like get down to the bedrock underneath it, it would be a good spot, but so hard to work something like that. Perfect example of an undercut bank. Good looking material. That looks to be decomposed bedrock right there. The gravel from the decomposed bedrock right there. I would clear out that pocket, clear out that pocket, clear out that pocket. That's where the gold is. I keep saying that's where the gold is because there is so much widespread gold here. We would find it in any one of these spots. You're still looking for the hotter spots. If you find gold here, but if it's not quite what you're expecting, you still move on, but there would be gold right there. My philosophy with that is if you settle for a mediocre spot, you're gonna have a mediocre day. If you keep looking for that good spot, if you find it, well, then you're having a good day. Ooh, this looks good. Look at all that bedrock at the lowest possible spot. Oh, I wish I had a metal detector down here. I could find a picker on that for sure. Perfect spot for a metal detector. You know your detector is always within a couple inches of any gold that might be sitting on that rock. Beautiful day for a walk down the creek. I needed this nice and relaxing. Still doing something I love. Looking for good spots for gold, just like that. Not working my butt off digging hard or panning hard. Great day. Loving life. Shale up on edge like this really catches gold. 
really, really catches gold. But it's a pain in the butt to work. You kind of have to take, find the pieces, get them loose, pop them out, scrape down in them. Pain in the butt to work. But it's one of the best capture media there is. Capture media, sure. Best type of bedrock for catching gold is shale up on edge, creating these fingers going up, these big, deep grooves. And the fact it's right at a tree that causes turbulence, even better. Again, guarantee there's gold right there. If only I had the time and energy to clear all these spots, I'd be coming out of here with ounces of gold. But that would take weeks, months, years to do with all the spots I've found so far. And as you can see, panning is a little bit difficult right now. There is no water. That shale up on edge comes right through this whole section, right up underneath that tree. Again, a detector here would be nice. Roots on the edge to capture the gold and capture the current and everything. And shale up on edge at the bottom, right underneath it. It's a twofer. Two good things in one. Actually, three, because that's the lowest point right there. The lowest point of the whole river, right there. Three things all added together. Great little spot. Big, big inside curve here. Shale up on edge, right at the edge. On the inside corner. Again, a twofer. Nicely scoured bedrock with lots of crevices. Figuring out any of those crevices could be good, but personally, I like that hole right there. In line with the creek, linear, but the deep spot. Anything that gets washed off the slanted bedrock is going to end up falling in there and staying and sticking. Yep. Yep. Uh-oh! Time to do the limbo. Can you imagine me with my back trying to do the limbo? <laughs> And I'm hearing vehicles, so I think I'm getting close to the end, but it's looking better and better and better down here. Loving this place. Now, right now, if I had decided that, hey, I wanna find gold on this creek, what should I do? What I would do to find gold right now is metal detect because there's not enough water to pan the whole length of it. So if I had my Gold Monster 1000, I would take all of those bedrock spots I picked out along the way and detect them all. If I had like the Mine Lab 7000, big coil and everything, I would just go up and down the whole creek detecting for big nuggets down deep. I would probably bring a bucket with me and any signal I got, I would just dig into the bucket and carry the bucket along with me. Because the material here is so clay and there's no water to wash it, I would have a hard time finding anything in the signals. So I would just dig up signals, find a puddle and pan them out. If there were more water here, I might tackle it a little different. Now I do hope to be invited back someday so I can go and actually do that, do some metal detecting along the creek. This is a national historic site. You have to get permits and approvals and everything to do this, but they've been very, very accommodating to me here and great people at the Reed Gold Mine. If you ever get a chance, check out the Reed Gold Mine in North Carolina. Make sure you do so. It's an awesome place. Now, no gold video is complete without showing you gold. So here's some gold that I panned just the other day right there in that creek. And here's some more historic gold from the area. There be gold here. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, I hope I earned your subscription today. Big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Hope you're having a great day. And until the next one, bye. And here are a couple other videos where I show you where to look for gold when you're on rivers and creeks. Check it out.